Hello everyone and welcome to Tabor Talk. I'm your host Michael Tabor. So I am downstairs in my basement because it's too cold out there to do it on the deck. And uh, I'm at my wife's studio. I, this is so neat. She is amazing how she has it. Now we have an unfinished basement but that's what makes it kind of cool. So um, there's Mother Mary and uh, this is really, really something else here. I'll just here. Okay, so getting right into this. I'm not going to be in this video. Uh, I have the camera turned away from me, and I'm going to play a video here, which is very interesting. This is a, um, a gentleman's name is Frank Schaefer. He's a writer and an artist, and uh, the name of his YouTube post here is, let me explain why Trump's core white supporters won't ever turn against him. Um, this is really, really interesting. I'm just going to play this now. By the way, you see that Omega-3? There, yeah, I'm going to be doing videos about Omega-3. I have a serious Omega-3 uh, saturated fat uh, deficiency. Is it polyunsaturated? I, I don't know. Um, I got to look. I had extensive blood uh, work, and it seems that, you know, I have neuropathy, and my levels are way, way low. I just found this out, so I'm very hopeful. So I've been downing these omega-3 pills like crazy. So anyway, I'm not going to talk about my omega-3 deficiency or fish oil thing right now. I want to get right into Frank Schiffer, and this is profound. So basically, we all know that, that Trump is mentally ill and unstable, and really, his supporters are, obviously, as well. Okay, let me just play this. Ready? Hi, my name is Frank Schaefer. I am a writer and a painter. Sitting in my studio in my bathrobe, having just finished painting this morning, I tend to work in the morning, and um, getting ready to take a walk with a th three of my, my five grandchildren. But before I get up and shower and shave and go out, I just wanted to share something with you, and that is that I've been talking to people in the media and other folks who are in politics and they all ask me the same question and it goes something like this frank your background was in the religious right your father was a religious right leader can you explain to us why trump's most unwavering support comes from evangelical christians who say yep. they follow jesus whose teaching seems to go across everything trump is from his arrogance to his lies to his divisiveness and all the rest of it end question mark close quotes and I think it's instructive to point out a couple of things. First of all, it's pretty much beyond debate that Trump is mentally unstable mm -hmm. and unfit to be president yep. as such. It's also beyond debate that his own lifestyle of philandering, groping women, sexual assault, bragging about it, three marriages, immense amounts of womanizing that he bragged about on shows like Howard Stern's radio show would Absolutely. all be dismissed as filthy living I heard that too, by, the way, the by evangelicals it's despicable. when it would involve anybody else, say their own pastor, who they would fire instantly yep. if he was caught doing a tenth of these things. Yep. And then you come to the racial divisiveness and the outright support for the KKK, yep. neo-Nazis, yep. white supremacists, and others. That's easier to explain because a lot of white evangelicals are racist. They come from a movement that was in the forefront of segregation, was in the forefront of starting white schools right. to get around integration of public schools and so forth. It. But that said, there are millions of white white controversial, who are but not it's true, racist what he just said. Yeah. And who welcome people of other races to our midst. For instance, their brothers and sisters in Christ who are Hispanic in the Pentecostal movement. So that begs the question, why out of that 81% vote from white evangelicals are the core of the core still hanging in with him. And I think what a lot of secular people who question me don't understand is that if Trump is delusional, it's no accident that his core support are the most delusional and mentally unfit people in America. And that is religious fanatics of all stripes, fundamentalists of all kinds. Mm -hmm. This kind of fundamentalism isn't limited to America. In India, for instance, there are fundamentalist nationalist Hindus murdering Muslims because they say that some Muslim ate some beef or killed a cow. And in Israel, the, the fundamentalist Orthodox Jews there are circling the wagon and essentially trying to turn that state into a kind of an apartheid state where 
Palestinians are treated as second class citizens. And as someone who lived in South Africa for a year while I was making a movie there back in the mid 1980s, uh, I can say that when I visit the state of Israel, it looks more and more like apartheid South Africa. So the phenomena of the rise of delusional, xenophobic, conspiracy theory laden uh, movements with religious spin to them is universal. It's what Iran is about. It's what Saudi Arabia and the Islamists that it backed all over the world through its Wahhabism, exporting radical, violent Islam, which it continues to do to this day, uh, is all about. So we're part of a global phenomena. But that said, the evangelical white group of voters who supported Trump are his core of his core support. That's right. People talk about hillbilly elegy and this sort of theory of working class America and blue collar America being left behind. And yeah, that's a contributing factor as is yep. racism and the rest of it. But the yep. core of his support is delusional white evangelical Christianity. Yep. So what I have to explain to my questioners in the secular media and often political operatives as well who want to have my opinion because I've been around the block. I knew people like President Reagan and Jack Kemp and the Bush family and all the rest when I was a religious right activist myself is why is their support so unshakable? So let me explain very briefly here. It's simple. It's not political support. It is support for a religious worldview. They have made Trump into a theological issue about the return of Christ. There is a group it sounds of crazy, doesn't it? in the Pentecostal movement and elsewhere who believe that Trump somehow fulfills prophecy of being perhaps an unjust king, perhaps a wicked man, but very much like some of the kings in the Old Testament stories, has been raised up nevertheless is by God right? to do a job. And that is to purify America from whether it's transgenders or gay people or uh, purify America by appointing Supreme Court justices that will overturn Roe v. Wade, this prepares the way for the return of Christ. So showing them better facts, or that he's told a thousand verifiable lies at this point, literally, or showing them that a $15 an hour minimum wage is something that's good, or that universal health care is what Americans want, or that college debt is crushing the millennial generation and that relief of college debt would be so wonderful or that we really need a genuine infrastructure program. <clears throat> None of this matters yeah. because the certainty addiction brain of all fundamentalists is delusional. It changes in the same way that drug addicts on opioid uh, abuse change. It isn't a question of choice. It's the actual neural pathways in our brain are reshaped by belief sometime to the point where you have this kind of epigenetic inheritance among evangelical groups He's where terrific, with their mother's guy. milk evangelical children are taught to reject the world's wisdom i.e science and facts as fake news the real news is in the bible whether it's about creation or genesis or the fact noah's ark really existed or whatever it may be male, female sexual relationships, and so forth. So having set up a totally alternative universe, you have to understand that evangelical Christianity itself is like birtherism. It is a conspiracy theory that believes the whole world, its science, its facts, its scholarship, its academic elites, the media, common sense, all of this is somehow a conspiracy of Satan to distract real believers on track to get to heaven when they die, to receive Jesus when he comes back to a more perfect world where women's rights have been stripped away, where gays are back in the closet or dead, where for a lot of them it's a white, Protestant, middle-class culture. So get it through your heads, everybody. Better arguments are not going to win the day. What is going totally to win agree. is if we can convince people that these religiously fanatical certainty addicts are dangerous and Trump is unleashing them. If you want to know where they'd like to take America, watch Handmaid's Tale. There may be details in that that are wrong, but that's their idea More of the book. heaven on earth. <clears throat> Logic has nothing to do with it. What we need to do is talk to independent voters, people who think both parties are the same, which is utter nonsense, 
and get their apathetic distance from the political process cured by showing them who these evangelical voters really are. Yeah. They're delusional fanatics. They're as delusional and fanatical <clears throat> and demented as Donald Trump. They like him because he is an image, a secular image, albeit a philandering image, albeit, but an image of delusional, delusional worldview. And so they look to him as a fellow delusional conspiracy theorist who marches to the same drummer they do, which is alternative fact, delusion, lies, accepted as truth. Evangelicals think from God, Donald Trump thinks from his own ego, which is all he cares about. He worships himself. But the delusion cuts across both Trump and his core followers. They are deluded. They are in fact, crazy. Thank you. My name is Frank Schaefer. That was great, wasn't it? Whoa. I couldn't have done it better. All right. So, um, okay. I think I'll leave it at there. He said it all. I mean, it, it is kind of a mystery. I've This has been going for me, like, even before 2016, 2015, when, he, you know, Trump threw his hat in. You know, I've been following Trump since the 80s, and I have all these strong arguments, and it was like, I, I had given up, like, good arguments. <laughs> you, you, when someone's mentally ill and unstable and not very educated, some of these guys are educated, too, by the way, so it's, you can't just blame it on lack of education, although that is a, certainly a thing. Um, I mean, I know a guy, I mean, I know a few guys who are just, I don't even waste my breath anymore. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. A little pan of my wife's uh, thing, and... Uh, you know, um, there's Jesus. That's the real Jesus. I don't think Jesus would be supportive of Donald Trump. In fact, I know that's the case. All right. Good friends, good books, and a sleepy conscience. Peace, love, and understanding here on Tabor Talk. Mm -hmm.